Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining me for Song and Scripture, where we take just a few minutes to examine the songs that we sing in our worship services and see the passages in the Bible that have inspired them. My name is Colin Elk, and today we are not going to look at a new song, but instead we're going to look at a very old song that we sing quite a bit here at Westbury, entitled Crucifixion to the World by the Cross of Christ. Uh, now, if that title doesn't sound very familiar to you, it's because we probably know it better today as When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Uh, the words were written by Isaac Watts, and the tune was composed by Lowell Mason. Uh, Isaac Watts is probably one of the most famous and influential hymn writers of all time. Uh, in fact, he's often dubbed the godfather of English hymnody, which is a really fun word to say. Uh, he wrote about 750 hymns in his lifetime, including I Sing the Mighty Power of God, Joy to the World, uh, and We're Marching to Zion. But arguably, this could be considered his greatest hymn. Uh, in fact, Charles Wesley, uh, an Englishman who came along a generation after Watts, reportedly said that he would trade his entire collections of songs that he had written, which was about 6,500 hymns, he would trade them all to have written When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. That's how good he thought it was. Uh, and it's so good that it has endured all the way from 1707 till now. Uh, and it's managed to stay just as relevant then, uh, just as relevant now as it was then. Uh, so if you take a look at the link that I have in the description of this video to hymnary.com, uh, you can see that each verse of this song is inspired by a passage of Scripture. Uh, and today I want to take a look at one of those passages of Scripture, uh, the main one that, that inspired Watts to write this hymn, uh, and that's Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But as for me, I will never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world has been crucified to me through the cross, and I to the world." Now, the Apostle Paul, who wrote this book of Galatians, spent a significant part of his early life trying to be the best Jewish follower that he could possibly be, right? He tried to be the best student that he could be and learn the law of God. He tried to be the best Hebrew that he could be and uphold the law of God. And he tried to be the best enforcer that he could be and punish and kill those who disobeyed the law of God. His entire life, he spent devoting himself to God and his law, trying to be the best and have the best relationship with God that he could possibly have. And yet, on that day he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, he discovered that he had fallen short, that despite his best efforts, sin had creeped into his life and that he had disobeyed God. He realized that he so desperately needed God's love grace, and mercy. And it was on that day that he stopped trying to think about how good he was and start to think about how perfect Jesus is and his sacrifice on the cross was for us. Because that was the one thing that could help Paul, right? Paul could spend the rest of his life trying to fix his problem of sin, but the truth is he was never going to be able to do it on his own. It was only through Jesus where that salvation and that redemption would come from. And brothers and sisters, I would have to say that the same is true for us. It's easy for us, and I want to take a moment to say that I'm speaking to myself in particular. Uh, it's easy for us to fall into the trap of pride, to want everyone to see how smart or talented or gifted that we are. But we forget that any talent or gift or ability that we have comes from God and that we're supposed to use them for his glory and not ours. So we have to do exactly what Paul said that he did in this verse. We have to die to the world and give everything that we have to God. Because the truth is, if we keep boasting about ourselves, we're not boasting about the best thing in our life. The best thing that we have is Jesus and what he's done for us. It's why the words of this hymn are so incredibly powerful. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And that's what God asks for of us, everything that we have. 
So I'd like you to take just a little bit to listen to this song, read the scripture again, and to think about those words at some point this weekend so you can come with your mind prepared for us to worship our God on Sunday morning at 9. I encourage you to join us in person if that uh, is a possibility for you, or to join us online through Facebook or YouTube where you can view our worship service and be a part of, uh, be a part of them. Uh, we're going to dive into the love that God has for us and the love that God asks for us to have for each other. So I hope that God blesses you this weekend and that you're able to stay safe. Have a good weekend, guys.